Hi, and welcome to our session today. My name is Chris Latimer. I'm one of the product managers here at Google Cloud. And today I'm going to be talking to you about building and managing APIs for serverless with Google Cloud. There are going to be five things we're going to look at today. We're going to start off by looking at how we can build services. We're going to use the cloud code plugin that GCP provides to developers to make it easy to get started with GCP development. We're going to look at how we can deploy those services to Cloud Run. And then we're going to look at how we can combine multiple services together to form an API using GCP's brand new API gateway, which is just announced in beta. Once we have that API created, we're going to see how we can secure that API. And then finally, once everything's up and running, we're going to take a look at how we can monitor that API using cloud logging and cloud monitoring. So that if anything's not working the way we expect, we can get alerted uh, to that fact. For our first step, we're going to look at how we can build services. We're going to use the Cloud Code plugin that comes with IntelliJ. Now, you could also use Visual Code if that's your um, if that's your preferred IDE. Now, there are a few steps that I've already taken ahead of time. So, I've already installed IntelliJ. I've already installed the Cloud Code plugin. I also have installed Docker and the G Cloud CLI. So, if you're going to follow along, you may want to do these same steps on your workstation. Uh, so let's jump into the demo and take a look at how we can build a service using the Cloud Code plugin and then get that deployed to Cloud Run. To get started in IntelliJ, we're going to select Create a New Project. And we are going to select the Cloud Run option that comes with the Cloud Code plugin. And I'm going to pick the Java version. We'll give this a name, we'll call it Customers API, and click Finish. Once this is done, IntelliJ is going to look at the project structure. It's going to detect that we have a Maven POM file. We can add that POM file and, and switch this over to a Maven project now inside of IntelliJ. That's going to give us all the standard Maven features that we'd want. If we take a look over at the code base, we'll see that within the file system, the Cloud Code plugin has given us a good starting point. It gives us a Spring Boot app that will run right out of the box. So if I configure my SDK and tell IntelliJ I want to use Java 11, I can then click over here on this Spring Boot and select the Spring Boot Run option. This is going to start my application locally. And so after a few seconds, this is going to come up. And it's going to start successfully. And we can verify that by looking over here at the log messages that are printed to the console. We see that it successfully started. Now listening and accepting traffic. If I come into my browser now and I hit localhost 8080, we can see that this app is in fact running. So right out of the box, we can get a web application working, but what we really want is we want a microservice that we can deploy to Cloud Run. And so rather than walk you through the individual steps of how to create an API inside of Spring Boot, which is well documented elsewhere on the internet, I have already pre-configured this in my Git repository. So I'm going to start off by checking out a tag here called uh, Basic API. And then once I do this, we can go back into the IDE. And here, if we look at the file system, we're going to see now that instead of the web app, we have a controller, an entity, and a service. Inside the controller, you can see this is a REST controller. It has a single mapping uh, to slash. And the way that we are going to process these incoming requests is we're going to use a service called customer service. Looking inside here, this is just a mock service. So I don't have a database behind here, but it is going to populate a list of entities, a list of entities called customer that has a number of different fields associated with it. We can now run this the same way that we did before. So we'll use the Spring Boot plugin, use the run target. Again, we're going to see messages printed out here to the console. And after a few seconds, we're going to see one that says that our app is started successfully. And if we look, scroll over here to the right, we do see that same message. So once that's started, we can come now over into the terminal window. And let's issue a curl command on localhost 8080. We could pretty print this JSON with the Python JSON tool. And there we go. Our API is successfully now running locally here on my workstation. Now we're ready to deploy our microservice into Cloud Run. So let's click on Edit Configurations up here. This is going to bring up a form that comes with Cloud Code. 
We can pick our GCP project. We can pick our region that we want to deploy our service into. We can select a service name and then whether we want to have authentication or not. In this case, we do. So we'll select that. Last thing we need to specify is where we should upload this container image. In this case, we're going to use the Google Container Registry. So we'll give it a name here of Customers API and note that my project uh, is also specified here. Uh, also important to note that I've already pre-enabled the Google Container Registry on my project before I started this demo. So you may get an error if you try to upload this and you haven't enabled that service on your project. Now let's go ahead and save our configuration here. And now let's run it. So as this runs, it's essentially going to do all the steps that we need to actually get our container up and running uh, on Cloud Run. So it's going to build a container locally. It's going to interact with GCR. It's going to create the necessary tags that it needs. Uh, if it finds the container in the cache, it's not going to rebuild it. And then it's ultimately going to deploy this to Cloud Run. And uh, after a few seconds here, what we should see is that it'll come back and say uh, it's deployed and now accepting traffic. Uh, and that uh, traffic is going to be accessible via this URL that you see right here. Now, remember, we secured this API. And so if we come back to the terminal window and we try to curl that URL, we're going to get a message saying that your client does not have permissions to, to essentially to make this call. And that was back here on this configuration where we said require authentication. If we had said allow unauthenticated connections, then we would have been able to access this API just fine as is. But we really want the gateway to be that entry point into our API. So we want to say we want to tell Cloud Run to authenticate these requests so that all of our clients have to come through the gateway. And the only authenticated client that's going to be able to call into our Cloud Run back in directly is going to be the gateway. So we see that the API has been deployed. We can hit it here locally using curl. But let's jump over to Cloud Console and just verify that everything looks fine there. We'll navigate down to Cloud Run. And just as expected, we see the customer API deployed, green checkbox next to it. Everything is looking good here. So let's jump back into the presentation and recap what we've seen so far. All right, so coming back from the demo, let's take a look at what we just saw. The first thing we saw is how to get started using the Cloud Code plugin. This set up a nice workspace for us. It set our file system up so that we had all of the pieces that we needed to start building our actual service that we're interested in. We took that initial starting point and we used it to create a nice RESTful service using Spring Boot. And then once we were satisfied that that was running locally the way that we wanted, we configured the IDE to deploy that into Cloud Run. Once that was there, we saw that the deployment worked successfully, and now we have our service up and running exactly as we hoped it would. And so currently, this is what our Cloud instance looks like. We have a single customer API that's running in Cloud Run. And if we wanted to, we could have a client uh, make calls directly to this, this service. Uh, if all we had was a single service and a single client, this is not such a bad option. We could create a service account. We could give that service account to the client. They could make calls and uh, everything would work you know, pretty, pretty good. Uh, the problem that's going to happen is that as we start adding more and more services, we're putting more of a burden on our client. They're going to have to remember which service is responsible for which piece of functionality. They're going to have to route to the right place each time. And that can be inconvenient. It can also be inconvenient for us as the API providers because now we have to think about who we're going to break whenever we make a change. What would be better is if we could put a single API facade in front of these services so that for our clients, we can give them one consistent interface that they can use and we can insulate ourselves from those clients. We have flexibility to scale and deploy and make changes to our backend services without worrying that our clients are going to need to change. So let's jump into our next demo and take a look at how we can use services that are deployed onto Cloud Run, put an API gateway in front of those to create one consistent API facade for our clients. So let's jump back into the Cloud Console here and navigate to Cloud Run. Like we showed on the presentation, we want to be able to have an API gateway that's going to sit in front of multiple services so that our API clients don't have to worry about which service to route which request to. We just want them to have one nice API facade that they can call into. And we want API Gateway to handle both the security on that API as well as the routing so that we send those requests to the right service on the back end.
To configure API Gateway, we need to have an open API specification file and it needs to have all of the resources in our API. So in this case, you can see that we have a customer's resource, an account's resource, and an order's resource. Once we have that set up, we need to configure the value for host. Now this may be a little bit um, surprising if you're, if you're used to using uh, open API. The value that we're gonna put here in the host field is gonna be a combination of the identifier that we wanna use for the API here in this field called API ID, as well as our project. And this is gonna to conform to the standard service naming structure uh, that's used within Google. So uh, for right now, just think about this as this is just the format that you have to follow. Don't think too much about why this format is the way it is. This is just the way that API Gateway gets configured. And then here on the title field, we want to put in that same API ID. And we'll see in later steps that we're going to, that this value that we put in for title is going to show up when we go to create an API key and when we go to restrict that key to only be able to call certain services. Once we have host and title configured, the next thing to do is to add in routing instructions for API Gateway. So for each of these resources, we're gonna use the X Google backend that you see here, and we're gonna put in an address that corresponds to the correct service that's running in Cloud Run. So for example, for the customer's resource, we wanna to route to the customer service. So how do we do that? First thing that we have to know is the address for each of our services on Cloud Run. And so to find the address that we wanna to route to, we can navigate back to Cloud Console and find the service that we're interested in. And if we click on the service, it's gonna bring us to a more detailed view. And you can see that right up here, we have the address where this service is accessible. And we can copy this to our clipboard. And then we will jump back to the IDE and back to our open API specification. And then here on the address field, we'll just simply paste this in. So here's our, our address for the customer service that's currently running on Cloud Run. Next, we'll do that exact same thing for the account API. We will grab its URL from Cloud Run. We'll come back to the IDE and paste that value in the address field here. Then we'll go back to the Cloud Console again, this time grabbing our orders API, copy the location for this service, and just like before, we'll paste that into the address field here. At this point, our open API specification is ready to go and we can use this to create a new API uh, inside of API Gateway. To do that, we're gonna go to Cloud Console. We're gonna get navigate down to the API Gateway option and we're gonna click on Create API. Here, we're gonna give our API a display name. We'll call it e-commerce uh, API. And we need to use the same API ID here that we used in our open API specification. So we called it e-commerce there. We need to make sure we call it e-commerce here as well. Now this step takes a little while to complete. It's usually one to two minutes or so for it to, to get done. And then once it does wrap up, we're ready then to upload our open API specification that we just created. So we'll click on browse. We'll find the file in our file system. And once we do, we'll select that open API file. And then we'll give our configuration here a display name. This will just show up on the list when we go to the UI. And then uh, we're gonna select the service account that we want to use to connect to that backend uh, to the cloud run services that we are routing to. So again, this step is gonna take, you know, around 30 seconds or so to complete. And then once this wraps up, we'll be able to deploy our new API config to an API gateway. So just like before, we're gonna give our API gateway a display name. We'll call it the Commerce API Gateway and pick a location. We'll use US Central. That's where all of our Cloud Run services are deployed. Click Create and there we go, it's created. Uh, I can now click on this API and if I do, I'll see that uh, I have a gateway associated with it. This is deployed and this gateway is accepting traffic at the URL that you see listed under gateway URL here. Now I can take this URL, I can go to my browser and I can just simply issue a request and I'll call the gateway URL slash customers and voila, there we go. We get our data back from our customer's API. So now let's jump back into the slides and let's recap what we saw in this demo. 
All right, so what do we see in that demo? Well, we started off with our open API specification and we started off by defining all the resources that our API is going to expose to the clients. And then we configured API gateway with the parameters that API gateway needs. And that was really our API ID, our title and our project ID. And then finally, we updated each of those resources to point to the correct service on Cloud Run so that when an API call comes in, it's going to be routed to the right place. Once we had our open API spec all ready to go, we went back into Pantheon and we configured API Gateway. Now you saw that there were a few steps that we went through. And one of those steps is we uploaded our open API specification and we created an API config. And in the demo, we just created one and we took that one API configuration and we deployed it directly to the API gateway. But APIs can actually have multiple configurations associated with them. And this can be pretty useful for a number of use cases. If you're doing something like API versioning or you're building out an SDLC, maybe you're going to have a different configuration in your test versus dev versus prod environment. API configs can help you to solve those use cases. And right now, after our demo, this is what our environment looks like. We have three different services that are running on Cloud Run. We have an API gateway now with an API called e-commerce that's fronting those services. And then our clients are now have a consistent interface that they can call into to access any pieces of those services that are running in Cloud Run. Now there's just one problem, the, that API is wide open to the internet. So anyone at this point can make a call to our API and it's gonna respond with data. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to put in place some security so that not just anybody can call into our API, but only clients that we authorize. And so why don't we jump back into the demo and look at how we can use API Gateway to add API key security to provide a more secure API for our clients. To configure API security, we're going to come back to our open API specification. As you can see, I have a new security definition that I've already added. It has a type of API key, it has a name of key, and it has an in value of query. So what this means is that I'm going to look for an API key, I'm going to look for a query parameter called key, and that's what I'm going to interpret as the API key. Now, I need to then go to each individual resource and I need to add in a security definition. And I'm going to just simply reference that API key that I had in the security definition above. And what this is gonna do is it's going to then require any incoming API calls to either provide a valid API key that's been authorized to use this resource or else it's going to reject the call. Now that we've configured security within our open API specification, we can come back here to the cloud console and we can find the same e-commerce API and the same API gateway that we created in the previous demo. And we need to create a new API configuration. So to do that, let's go to the config tab that you see here and we're going to click on upload config. Just like we did in the last demo, we're going to click on browse. We're going to find that open API specification that we just created with our security definitions in it. We're going to select that file and upload it. Now we'll give it a new uh, display name here as well. We'll call this one e-commerce secure config. And then just like before, we're going to select the service account that we're going to use to authenticate the calls to cloud run. We'll pick the same gateway. We could have created a new gateway here as well, but we're going to just override the config that was deployed to that existing gateway. And we will wait for around 30 seconds or so while our configuration is uploaded and deployed to that new gateway. And after patiently waiting for a few seconds here, we will see that this step will complete successfully. As soon as this step wraps up, our configuration is live and is deployed to our API gateway. So just like we did in the last demo, we can come back over here to our browser window and we can issue a request to our gateway URL slash customers. But this time we're going to get a different response. Last time we got back data, we got back customer data. This time we're getting back an error message saying, hey, this API is expecting you to provide an API key, but you didn't provide one. So now let's take a look at what we need to do to get valid credentials so that we can call this API. If you recall, when we were very first setting up our open API specification, I said, we're going to use this API ID and we're going to put that ID into the title field. So let me show you exactly how that title value is going to be important to API consumers. Uh, before we can get a valid key to call our API, we need to enable this API 
within our GCP project. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come here to the APIs and Services dashboard, click on Enable APIs and Services. And that title, that e-commerce title is what we're going to search for. And that's the API that we're going to find right here. And once this pops up, we can click on Enable. It's going to take a few seconds. It's going to say this is not a Google API and give you a little warning there. Uh, but after a few seconds, it's going to then be enabled on our project. And once it is, we can then navigate over to the uh, APIs and Services credential section. And we can create a new credential. In this case, it's going to be an API key. That key is created. And then we're going to want to restrict that key. Otherwise, it's going to give us access to everything. Once we click on restrict key, we're going to see a list of services we can select from. Now, because we enabled the e-commerce API, we're going to see e-commerce in that list. And now this key that we're generating is only going to be good for making calls to our e-commerce API. Now we can click here and we can copy our key to a clipboard. And then we'll jump back to the browser where we had the error before. And let's put in a query parameter called key equals API key. And there we go. Now we're getting back data instead of the error. Our API is secured. We have a way to get credentials and a way to get access to our API. So now let's jump back into slides and let's recap what we did and what we saw in this demo. All right, so great. We've set up our API gateway. We have configured it to point to our Cloud Run services and now we've added security on top of it. Uh, so we're done, right? Um, well, in a sense, yes, but if this were a real production API, uh, as you know, we're gonna have to actually operate and maintain and manage this thing. And a big part of that is going to be monitoring our API to make sure that it's working the way we expect. So why don't we jump into our next demo now and take a look at how we can use cloud logging and cloud monitoring to set up an alert. So that if something's going wrong with our API, we'll get alerted about it. For our last demo, we're going to take a look at how we might monitor APIs. So to do that, we're going to come down here to the operation section of the Cloud Console menu pick monitoring and then alerting underneath the monitoring menu. To start off, we're gonna create a new policy. And let's talk a little bit about what types of things we might wanna monitor. We might wanna look at things like air rates that are creeping up too high. We might wanna look at uh, the amount of traffic that's coming through our API. Or in this case, what we're gonna show is how we can monitor the backend latency and get alerted if all of a sudden our backend for our API is taking longer to respond than a specific threshold. Let's start by giving our alerting policy a name. We're gonna call it slow backends. And then we're gonna add a condition. First thing we need to do is define the right resource that we wanna monitor. Now for API Gateway, all of the resources and metrics that we're going to report are going to be underneath the produced API resource. So that's what we're going to select here for our first condition. Once we've selected that resource, we can pick from a number of metrics. In this case, we're going to pick request backend latency. From here, we need to select the aggregator. Uh, we could look at things here like the 50th percentile, 95th percentile. In this case, I'm going to pick the 99th percentile because I want to understand what the worst latency uh, the consumers are experiencing. And then the last thing that we're going to need to do under configuration is to set a threshold. Uh, I'm going to set it pretty low, just to 10 milliseconds, just to make sure it's going to be easy for us to trigger this alert and we can verify that it's working. And then the very last thing we'll do is we'll just click on add and then that will bring us back to our main create alerting policy form here. And the next thing we're going to need to do is to set up a notification channel. We have different types that we can choose from. I'm just going to do a very simple notification channel here of email. And I'm going to enter my own email address in here. We'll click on add and then that's going to be it. We could add documentation if we want, but I'm just going to click on save. And now at this point, our alert is created. And our next step is going to be to start generating some traffic to see if we can trigger this alert and make sure that we're getting uh, an email if our latency start to creep up. So all we have to do to generate load, let's just come back over to the browser we were using before and we're just going to start hitting our backend with just a whole bunch of API calls. We'll just keep uh, smashing the refresh button and sending those API calls and hopefully that will be enough to trigger uh, an alert here before too long. If we go back to the monitoring UI now and refresh, we should see a new alert that's popped up, and we do. 
If we click on this, we'll be able to get some details about the alert, uh, exactly what happened, what was the latency that we were seeing, uh, verify that it did exceed the threshold. And then if I go to my inbox, I'll also see that I did get notified about this alert being triggered. And now if I were the person responsible for monitoring this API and operating this API, I could go dig into this and figure out what's going on and we could take corrective action to make sure that uh, we correct any problems that are occurring. Hopefully this gives you a good idea for how you can set up monitoring and alerting for APIs that are managed by API Gateway. And with that, let's jump back into slides and recap what we saw here in this demo. All right, so now we've seen how to build APIs, we've seen how to secure those APIs, and now we've seen how to monitor those APIs and make sure that we're gonna get an alert if anything's not working correctly. So we hope that through this demo and the presentation, you've gotten a taste for what you can do with our new API Gateway product, which again, we just recently announced in beta. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to you about the things that we have on our roadmap and where we see this product uh, evolving over the coming months. Um, so the first thing to talk about is API Gateway and how we see this serving GCP customers. If you're someone who's building web apps, you're building mobile apps or multi-experience apps that are using APIs on GCP, we really want to make that process a lot easier for you. Uh, not only just routing to things like serverless, but also helping you compose APIs. So if you have data that's in BigQuery, you have data that is running on serverless or non-serverless compute, maybe even uh, data that's in your data center that you want to connect to via VPC, we want to make that process extremely easy for you. Uh, if you're building out apps that need authentication and you want to use things like Google Cloud's identity platform, we're working closely with those teams to bring you a solution that's going to make it much, much easier to build those applications on top of Google Cloud. Now, specifically in our short term, we have a few enhancements that I'd like to make you aware of. We've had an overwhelming amount of demand for open API v3 support, and we've heard you loud and clear. Our team is working hard to implement open API v3 for API Gateway. We're expecting to have something out for you in the very, very first part of 2021. We're also working to integrate with the Google Cloud load balancer, and that's going to do a couple things. That's going to give you the ability to configure integration with products such as Cloud Armor. So if you need DDoS protection, you need OWASP top 10 protection, uh, IP filtering and so forth, it's going to be a great solution for you, as well as integration with our Cloud CDN for, uh, for, for caching those responses. For those of you that are more interested in full lifecycle API management, we're working really closely with the Apigee team as well to bring you integration with Apigee features such as API products and Apigee's developer portals. So on behalf of the entire team here at GCP, especially the serverless team, the Apigee team, and the API gateway team, we are so thankful for you taking the time to watch our session here today, and we really look forward to getting your feedback on the product. Thank you so much.